According to latest information, India had secretly launched its S-4 nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarine last month, which is an extended Eri Hunt-class submarine, and features eight vertical missile tubes, to launch the 3,500 km range K-4 SLBM and 800 km range K-15 SLBM. The DRDO will also conduct the first test of the 5,000 km range MERF capable K5 SLBM in the first quarter of 2022, and it will also be equipped on both the S-4 and the S-4 Star nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines. The DRDO has already got approvals to design and develop the 8,000 km range MERF capable K6 SLBM, that will be equipped on the 13,500 ton S5 class nuclear ballistic missile submarines. The Deputy Chief of Air Staff has accepted the comprehensive design review of the Tejas Mark II fighter jet which means that the Tejas Mark II is ready for fabrication and testing, and it would achieve its stipulated performance within cost schedule and risk. After this clearance by the Indian Air Force, Hindustan Aeronautics will now start releasing drawings for fabricating the first two Tejas Mark II prototypes, first of which will be rolled out by end of 2022, and after completing the low and high speed taxi trials, the first flight will be conducted by end of 2023. The Indian Navy chief has said, that the preliminary design review work for the development of the twin-engine deck-based fighter has begun at the Aeronautical Development Agency. The project is being monitored by the Naval Project Office at Bangalore, and the Navy chief has said that the TED-BF is planned to undertake its first flight in 2026, and rollout of the production variant will take place in 2031. The TED-BF will be 1.5 tons heavier than the French Rafale M, due to the wing folding mechanism and higher takeoff weight from aircraft carrier. The TED-BF will be powered by two F-414 engines, that will be later replaced by an indigenous 110 kN class engine that will be developed for the AMCA program. Interestingly, the TED-BF design can further be optimized to carry fifth-generation fighter jet technology once in production. The DRDO is preparing for the final test of the Mach 2 capable Rudrum 1 next generation anti radiation missile very shortly, which is a 200 km range tactical air launched missile that can be fired from both the Su 30 and Mirage 2000, and it detects enemy radar positions and destroys them, even when the enemy radar is not operating. After the final test, the Rudram 1 will enter its series production, and its delivery to the Indian Air Force will start by the end of 2022. The DRDO chief Dr. Sathi Shreddy has handed over the technology for indigenous extreme cold weather clothing system to five Indian companies for production. The three-layered extreme cold weather clothing system is designed to suitably provide thermal insulation over a temperature range of plus 15 degrees to minus 50 degrees Celsius, and will stop the import of extreme cold weather clothing from foreign countries. The Indian Air Force Chief has began a four-day visit to South Korea, during which he will visit key defense establishments and meet top South Korean defense military officials to boost military-to-military -military ties. India and South Korea held the third strategic dialogue early this month, where the two sides discussed partnership in critical and high technologies and supply chain resilience, and further enhanced the special strategic partnership by joint development and joint production in the defense sector. A Pakistan-based maritime think tank has called for the Pakistani Navy to take advantage of the AUKUS deal, that will allow Australia to acquire eight nuclear-powered attack submarines from the US and UK, and use this as a pretext to immediately build nuclear submarines with the help of China to maintain strategic balance in the Indian Ocean. 
Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has virtually inaugurated 24 bridges and three roads constructed by Border Roads Organisation, at more than 19,000 feet in the Ladakh region and in four states and two union territories, that will fulfil strategic needs of the military, and also ensure equal participation of remote areas in the development of the nation.